All right, let's do some sound. Uh, this is a Sebastian Gorka looking a very... I mean, he doesn't look fully awake yet or something. He looks very kind of... He looks even uh, even for him. He always looks pretty out of it, but he looks this really... sleepy Saturday this college sleepy, shows. Mm, C-SPAD's bullshit. My whole career is taken off. I can do Fox now. Look at me... What? Washington Journal's no Lou Dobbs. No Lou. Look at me slumming at C-SPAN. No, I, I actually think Gorka approaches C-SPAN differently. I think he's like, see how serious I am. I'm on oh, C-SPAN. right, right, right. They allow black Africans through the food <laughs> lines, and I just handle them with total adroitness. Um, I am not into tit-for-tat justice, and I'm like, you know, I, to be honest with you, I don't really care per se, about Gorka being in the country, but, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The just pure human pleasure of watching this buffoon, jackass, proto-fascist scum in one of these hits and just some ice thugs just <laughs> rush up on him and just be like, get to the ground! <laughs> Would just be such a delicious experience. Um, I don't know if this is quite the next best thing, but this is uh, this is pretty good. On C-SPAN, you know, kind of like us and unlike so many other people in the modern media environment, they are confronted with, you know, anybody who wants to call in and, uh, do, uh, you know, Gorka's there. He's doing his usual nonsense. And this caller, Henry, is not having it with him and the whole white supremacist cabal of them. We'll go to Michigan next on the Democrats line. Henry, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to try and establish uh, some ground rules. Uh, I'd like to be allowed to uh, make my comments without interruption by Sebastian, uh, because these clever right wingers they have a way of interrupting you. So uh, I, don't know, I think Steve's in charge. Make your point. Uh, <laughs> no, Henry, no, no, no. If I am interrupted, if I am interrupted, I'd like to be able to rebut uh, and not be cut off. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that you know the elections in 2018 are perhaps the most consequential in our history uh, because uh, we have to stop an impending dictatorship by uh, this uh, white supremacist uh, uh, right-wing traitor. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump, make no mistake, is a traitor, mm -hmm. uh, along with everybody in his orbit. Henry, why uh, do you say he's a traitor? Okay. I'm glad you asked me that question. We have to look at his relationship with the Russians. Donald Trump is owned by the Russian oligarchs because they are the ones who funded him when U.S. banks wouldn't. Uh, they have compromising information on him. We talk about the dossier. Well, the, no, what nobody is saying is that the dossier has been 80 percent has been proven to be uh, legitimate and 20 percent has been yet to be proven, but has not been disproven. Again, um, <laughs> 2018 will be a very, very consequential election. Uh, I'm saddened by people who live in an alternate universe who use words such as dictator, white supremacist, and traitor. That's, that's inflammatory and that's dangerous language. Uh, I can tell you as a person who's worked for the president in the West Wing, uh, he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. The one thing that yeah. came through to me most clearly from working for him is that he doesn't care who you voted for. He doesn't care whether you <laughs> voted for Hillary. He doesn't care whether you wanted Bernie to win. He doesn't care if you sat at home in November and didn't vote at all. He wants two things for you. He wants you to be safe, and he wants you and your family to prosper. That's who President Trump is. Um, the Steele dossier, 80% is proven. How do you mathematically prove the contents of a completely propagandized information operation is true in any way, shape, or form? I'll just quote one line from an FBI senior employee that is in the Nunes memo. We know that Steele and Orr were individuals who were desperate, desperate to make sure President Trump didn't become president. Hmm. Is that a black African with phone access? Hmm. 
Why aren't you calling to complain about what's happening in Chicago where the black Africans are running rapid? I'm really surprised he didn't do that, actually. Are you black, Carlo? Why are you not concerned about what's happening in Chicago, which is daily carnage and Sharia, where Africans are shooting each other by the bushel full? Nothing could be. The president doesn't have a racist bone in his body, and he doesn't have an extra bone like you. <laughs> No double ankle bone, Carla. His defense of like, how could you even know if it was 80% of us, 90%? That's an interesting little defense of his because, yeah. you know, like Carla really should have said, well, you know, this specific thing from the dossier has been confirmed, this specific thing, mm. rather than going through the metrics so that he could be like, what's your methodology there? Did you count the urine on the blood that our dear leader was urinating on? Were you there? When Tatiana peed on the pillow where Michelle Obama's head had rested, I think not. <laughs> and it's it's a bit frustrating hearing these calls, right? Because like the guy is obviously he's he's has his convictions and he feels onto it, but like you can hear him talking in the sort of like MSNBC kind of like frenzied up like Russia Gate ways right you know what i think would be better is to just say like i don't know what go i don't think that there. first of all my belief is that i don't think there's a single oligarch in the world that donald trump went in prostate for yeah. okay including i think that is one of the only things that transcends his racism like that joke i made about his defense of the disgusting comments he made about Haiti being like, I landed money for Duvalier. It's totally unfair. I think that's true. I wouldn't be surprised if stories came out like, oh, yeah, no, actually in the 80s, they were uh, the Duvaliers were washing some money and Trump was involved with it. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. So part of Trump's racism might be because he's just been like conditioned to see like, oh, if you're not white, you probably don't have money. Exactly. So I think that you could call up and I don't think you have to, I think you have to say, uh, Donald Trump is of whatever oligarch is calling the shots. Mostly it's American oligarchs because that's who runs our political process. And um, like, you know, Sebastian, you must feel incredibly lucky that a essentially fake garbage diploma or what in my opinion is a essentially fake garbage diploma um, some embarrassing books that you've written and basically being like on the Yenta lecture circuit and a very questionable immigration forum, you've rocked to the top of modern republicanism. Does this reflect your talent or the fact that Republicans reward bizarre, mediocre white supremacy with accents? And I'll take my question off air. Thank you. I think that's what you should do. Oh, this is the infamous, the diagram. So this is from, <laughs> this is from Sebastian Gorka's terrorism thesis. And I said, when we first reviewed this, when we did our first <laughs> Sebastian Gorka dissertation review. So for people who are listening, there's one bubble on the left. It says terrorism group. In uh, red. The in red. Terror. And then and around it says actor and the attack. Then there's an arrow, arrow that points to a big bubble that says terror attack victim. And then there's another arrow that pops up to another bubble which says society, political elite, general public, and international opinion. And then C, target of terror, result in fear and political pressure. And then on the lower, col on the lower end it says B, target of violence and victim. Now actually, this diagram is a lot better than the other one, which literally, if I recall, was like an axis that basically was like something to the effect of like, good, not good. <laughs> but every time I saw these, when I first looked at them, I really thought, I was like, I'm, I'm not a big charts and graphs guy. Like, is there something I'm missing here? <laughs> and we had to realize like, there is literally nothing that's being missed. Um, I believe... Sebastian Gorka's own dissertation advisor was sort of like, well, you know. Wouldn't call him an expert on terrorism. Yeah, he did the reading. <laughs> 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 Which, you know, I've, yeah, been, I've yeah. been in grad school even. You know, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, that, right. Fair enough. He's a terrorism expert in the sense that, like, every, like, schmuck that you've met, like, on a golf course is like, you know, I read the Friedman column and just... <laughs> What the Emirates are doing, pretty innovative. <laughs> I have 36 course hours. 
I have a degree in global geo strategy from Trump University. And 16 hours independent study. <laughs> I have an independent certificate of study from the McDonald's Extension School of Global Anticipatory Security Threats with a concentration on Sun Tzu quotes in translation. I hadn't seen that before, but thank you for that. <laughs> but the thing that took me the most was that he has the different color circles around yeah. the parts of the graph. Right. But they're all of like varying like thickness of line and like different like mm. arrows. Mm. It's like he was making it was like, mm. damn, I need to find the thin one for the attack victim because very, they're the most vulnerable. Very and perceptive. Society is the thickest, the most Le yeah, insulated. Let's use a bold circle around society because that is a very impermeable membrane. Very, in <laughs> very, very perceptive young Padwan. This is exactly the type of work that I did at the Hungarian Technical Extension Institute of Strategic Geostrategic. You know, like, you know that he would be like the type of guy who would go to like, you know, like the programs, like the more fake they are, the more pompous the name, mm -hmm. you know, like the, you know, like, yeah, like the, the New York Technical Institute for geostrategic capacity building and threat anticipation analysis every school that's on the <laughs> subway pretty much right although those schools at least teach you a goddamn trade he's probably like the only person who went out of like extension essentially <laughs> extension school it's like yep i now am literally a white house terrorism advisor so go screw yourself Society has a, <laughs> uh, has a wider border because when you get into society, they question your credentials. Mm.